Are you a junior halfway through junior year and wondering what can I do so that I make sure that I'm in good shape to apply to college next year? If that's the case, my name's Brooke. I'd love to help talk you through four things to try to prepare yourself for college. I particularly tend to work with students who are applying to like top 30 schools or so, but I certainly work with some that are even applying to all kinds of universities. So some of this does apply maybe a little bit more to those applying to competitive colleges, but in any case, I'm gonna give you the down low on what we go through and you don't have to pay for it. So that's the good news. There's a blog that goes with this video. So if you'd rather read instead of watch, link is in the description below this video. First thing that I say to students, and this is actually to me probably the most important thing, and that's to plan to explore your interests. Now I know this is a theme on my channel. If you've religiously watched lots of my videos, you may have heard me say this before, the idea of exploring your interests. But mid-year, junior year, it's really important that you start to think beyond even just where do I wanna to go to college? We had a guest on our channel earlier this year, Lisa Marker Robbins, and she does a lot of like career coaching. And it's, it's worked into the idea of career coaching, but one of the things that a lot of students don't have when they're applying to college is a sense of direction. It's important to think about the future for two different reasons. My first reason is that it makes you an attractive candidate for college and it gives you something to talk about in all your college application essays when they ask you, what do you wanna major in and why do you wanna do this and what are your interests and, and, and what are you passionate about, right? They have all these kind of questions that you're gonna be inundated with on application after application and you're gonna have to answer. And if you haven't done any of that homework, it's gonna be a lot harder to answer those. The second reason that it's important that you start to think about the future is um, practical and financial. Um, only about 50% of students who pursue bachelor's degrees in the United States actually finish them in less than six years. 23.5% of those who earn a bachelor's degree complete it after four years. So there's a one in five plus chance that when you go to college, you're not gonna get done in four years. And why do they not finish in four years? A lot of the times, it's that students change majors. So if you're changing majors, what happens is oftentimes you need different classes that you have to take. If you're going to a state school, sometimes the requirements are very strict and the classes are really hard to get into and you might be competing to get into a class that you can't get into and then you literally have to take another semester of college. Even if you have scholarships coming down the line, those scholarships are often only good for four years. So if you get like some full ride scholarship and then you wanna change your major, guess what? You're not gonna get that fifth year paid for necessarily. So these are all things to think about and one way to hedge yourself so that you don't, you know, slow down the degree granting process or waste time and money in that process is to have a little bit more of a solid sense of direction. Again, I'm not saying you have to figure out your whole life, but with some programs, if you don't know at the beginning, it can cost you a lot more in the end. So what can you do? This is not just signing up for a bunch of activities at your activities fair that are supposedly in your you know, channel of interest. It's actually you just taking the initiative to figure things out. What does that look like? It can mean you're gonna take a class this summer at community college in economics because you've thought, huh, I'm interested maybe in banking or economics or that sounds kind of cool, but I'm not sure if I'm actually good at economics. Take a class and maybe you'll find out. I took economics in college. I was terrible at it. It was the only subject I think I've ever taken in school where I just thought I am really not good at this. Okay, so you don't know if you're interested or not, but take a class, sign up at a community college. You can sign up for an online course in a topic that interests you, right? There are plenty of colleges and universities that have full courses that are available online and you can start anytime, video on demand. Three, you can join a summer program. Maybe you wanna do science research. Maybe um, you're interested in the theater arts and you wanna to apply to a summer program. Four, you can line up an internship in your area of interest. So if you're interested in marketing, heck, even Super Tutor TV has like a marketing internship. There are lots of internships out there you can apply to. You can apply to virtual ones if your parents are like, I'm not driving you anywhere. You can apply to ones in person in your community. If they're small businesses, you can even reach out to them directly and say, hey, my favorite little small business or coding camp place that I used to go in middle school, are you guys interested in a marketing coordinator for this summer? Because I'm trying to explore marketing, right? You could do all kinds of things. You can read a book from an expert in your intended field. If you're interested in you know, biological sciences or animal research or whatever it is, get books from the great, amazing people in your field and read about them. If you're interested in climate science, find the five best New York Times bestsellers on climate science and go read them and see what's going on and put your finger on the pulse and understand the issues. Um, you can watch TED Talks from people who inspire you. You can 
read up on LinkedIn profiles. This is one of my favorite things to do, right? If you want to be a marine biologist, find the best marine biologist you know of, and then go look at their LinkedIn and see how did they get to where they are? Oh, wait, they have a PhD. Oh, that's good to know. Oh, look, they did, they were a Rhodes Scholar. Oh, that's interesting. What's the Rhodes Scholars program? Maybe I'll check into that, right? But you can see the different paths that people who you respect took. And you could figure out a path for yourself. You can watch documentaries on people in your field. I once had a girl I work with and she was really interested in hospitality and entertainment and cooking, right? And she wanted to create a restaurant someday and she wanted to go to Cornell's restaurant school. And so she watched like Hero Dreams of Sushi and she became obsessed with like this sushi guy and how he massaged an octopus for hours. And that showed a lot of her passion just by watching a documentary on Netflix, guys. So I'm not asking you to go out and like win at the Olympics or anything. But what I, I'm asking you to do is figure out a sense of direction. And I think this is one of the most underestimated kind of valuable things within your potpourri of elements that you're combining together to write your college essays and tell colleges who you are and what you're into. Whatever it is that you're interested in or passionate about, if you can turn it into something that's self-initiated and a personal project, a lot of times that goes a lot further when it comes to your application in terms of showing how you're passionate about something or interested in something than just signing up on a clipboard at an activities fair and like joining a club, right? Joining a club is oftentimes easier than figuring out how to do something on your own. So those are just some ideas on how you can explore your interests. But literally, like I said, you guys, it could literally just be watching TED Talks on the internet. Okay, number two, study for the SAT and the ACT. I know we live in a test optional world and I think there's some misinformation coming down the pipeline that people think, oh, because we're test optional, I don't need to take the SAT or ACT. About 90% plus colleges and universities that you're going to be applying to, a great test score can help you, not hurt you. There certainly are some statistics from some colleges and universities, especially those ranked anywhere from about 20 to 70. That's where your test score really pulls a lot of weight as long as you're not applying to a test blind college. There are a handful of test blind colleges and and literally it's easier to name them than all the ones that are test optional. With UCs being test optional, it means that their admissions have been way less predictable than they have been in years past. Meaning that I used to be able to gauge a student and say, oh yeah, you'll probably get into UC Berkeley. And it's just been a lot more random because they've had to hire a lot of readers who don't even work at the university. Their contract positions. So they hire these contractors and they read all your essays and they're paid by the hour and they don't even necessarily wholly represent that university. They're pulled in for this kind of, you know, fall seasonal job or, or winter seasonal job. So know that um, the test blind game is slim. It's risky. And I really recommend that you get your SAT and ACT ducks in a row. The other thing is that scholarships, merit scholarships in particular, tend to be tied to test scores. So if you don't have one, guess what? your ability to get and score those amazing scholarships is going to potentially be reduced. So you're potentially reducing your scholarship pool and you're just limiting your options when you're applying to college, especially anybody planning to apply to top colleges, say ranked 50 or above, a test score is gonna help you potentially in this process. And you know what? If you study, 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 and you don't get the score you want, you can still hide it. You can still apply to these other schools if you want. If you need help on your SAT and ACT, Super Tutor TV, we have tons of free videos. Even if you have no money for prep, I don't care. We've got lots of videos here for you. And if you do want more help than that, supertutortv.com, we've got private tutoring. We've got an online video-based prep course. I'm even teaching a live class. I'm co-teaching with a woman named Jackie Polina who has a TikTok channel. You might've heard of J&J Test Prep. If you're up on TikTok, she has lots of SAT prep tips there. Plug over, but yeah, but I don't care. Even if you don't spend any money on her stuff, I still recommend that you prefer the SAT and the ACT. My third tip for mid-year, junior year, is start to think about teacher recs now. You know, you're gonna have to ask one of your teachers or two of your teachers, or maybe even three, for teacher recommendations. So now is a good time to start thinking about who you might ask. And you have a runway if you're like, oh gosh, I don't know anyone who I might ask. Well then, pick a few teachers and start going to office hours, you guys. Start to strike up conversations with your teachers before class and just be like, oh, how was your weekend, you know? Small talk. Not only is this good for your soul and good for the community that is your school, but it's also good for you to establish relationships with people so that when you get to the point where you have to be like, hey, Mrs. Smith, will you write me a letter of recommendation? You feel like you've already laid a little bit of groundwork and it's an easier question to ask and you're not freaking out going, she doesn't know me at all. She doesn't know anything about me. I've never even talked to her. This is awkward. And that's gonna make it so much easier for them to write a letter about you. Number four, keep your grades up. This should be straightforward and easy. Make sure you keep your grades up. If you have AP classes, study for them, guys, and get good AP scores. Even at test optional colleges and test blind colleges, many of these colleges are starting to use AP score as an admissions measuring stick. 
UCs look at AP scores, you guys, even though they don't look at SAT and ACT, they totally look at your AP scores. So it's test blind, but that's only SAT, ACT blind. It's not AP blind. But keep your grades up, do what you need to do, make good choices, all that good stuff, right? I think you guys need that one. I hope you guys liked this video or found it informative or found it helpful in terms of how you might be spending your time over winter break or over the summer next year or sort of the in-between. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet because we have lots of videos to help you through this entire process. And remember, don't worry, it's all gonna be okay. If you care enough to watch this nerdy video this long, you probably also care about your future. You care about going to college, getting a degree, and making a difference in the world in some way. And that is awesome. I think you guys are fantastic. See you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.